Hey friends, it's Awkwardly Random with Cynthia and Michelle, where we talk about random topics. Anything and everything awkward is on the table, so let's dive right in. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awkwardly Random with Cynthia and Michelle. We're back y'all, hope everybody's doing good. Mish, how are you doing? I am doing good. You know, I just got back from Milwaukee. I actually went to two concerts Dang, this girl. past week. Um, I went to see Juanes and then I went to see uh, Beach Bunny and The Strokes. It cool. was it was a good weekend um, in anticipation that also that my sister was going to give birth. But uh-huh. she hasn't yet, so I we anticipate it'll be next week, or if not, the week after. So, yeah, we'll see. When wow. She's gonna... Yeah, Wish but overall, really good. Yeah, overall, really good. Uh, finally getting some shit taken care of with my medical. Have my appointment good. set. So good. If, yeah, maybe we can do another episode about like how. Like, we're in our 30s now and, like, how, like, now it's our turn to, like, really take care of our bodies and go to, like, make appointments with doctors and Mm -hmm. follow through and stuff. So, yeah, taking taking care of that. Other than that, good. You're good. Okay. That's good. Well, congrats to your sis. She'll be, hopefully, be in labor soon. I know. (gasps) I can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. exciting. Yeah. And then I've never heard of what is it, Beach Bunny? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's a band. Oh, it's a band, and they performed with the Strokes. They uh, were one of the opening acts. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. And how was yeah, the Juanes concert? I will. Good. Um, Juanes, I went with my mom and my sister. It was so good. I love Juanes. Um, and I hadn't seen him live at all ever. So it was nice to see that. And he can actually really sing and Mm -hmm. is really talented and really plays the guitar really well and Mm -hmm. seems very humble and just like sweet. And I was like melting for him, (laughs) just looking at him. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was cool to see. And like, I I really enjoy a lot of his music. Um, So it was it was nice to see that and to hang out and do that with my mom. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did he sing any classics like La Camisa yeah. Negra? Of course. That's, I think that's how I discovered him. Yeah, same. He did um, La Camisa Negra, Fotografia, oh, La, pa- oh, La, La, La Paga, like La Plata. He did basically all of his hits. Me Enamora. I really like that yeah, one. Me Enamora was good too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, okay. I got to go back and listen so to his good. stuff. He's so yeah. good. It's Yeah, he is. I'm surprised. I was surprised by how good he sounded live. Yeah. It was good. It was good. And then like his musicians were all on point too. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, it really made me appreciate his music. Yeah. And you saw him in Milwaukee? Mm Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. I didn't even know he was there. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's on tour. I don't know where he's at now, but. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see if he comes to Dallas or somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Go see him. Yeah, I would love to. Um, and then the whole health thing. Have you ever heard of the term health anxiety? Yes, but I can you explain that a little bit more? So from my understanding, it's like what it it's what it sounds like. It's anxiety over your health. Oh yeah. And yeah. I'm and I'm experiencing it now that I'm older and yeah. Same. Like any little thing, I'm like, is this a symptom of something? You know, like say get all paranoid in my head when it's probably really nothing or like yeah. something really small, like nothing as I'm just, I'm just playing this, like I'm playing the worst case scenarios in my head and it's giving me a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So. I feel that. I think I feel that now, now that I'm in my thirties. Yeah. If for some reason, like my health just seems like really important and it should be, it is right. Yeah. But I feel like I haven't had, I haven't prioritized my health before as a, as if how I'm doing now so mm-hmm. I think maybe that's where the anxiety comes from for me and yeah I also am like oh my gosh I'm having these symptoms is this right. okay right. and I'm not a fucking doctor I, I'm like I should just go to the doctor and have yeah. them figure it out for me yeah um so yeah that's that's what I'm doing 
I've learned to not Google things because then I'll diagnose myself with all sorts of diseases and disorders or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so this uh, is people's friendly reminders to go to the doctor if something feels off or is off, like definitely look into it. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's always just good to get things checked out just in case you never know. And even when it's not off, right? Like, yeah, so too. just do regular, I have, I have actually finally called to set up my primary care physician here so Mm -hmm. I have a doctor's appointment on Friday just to set up care and just check like a physical or whatever just check make sure everything's good so like to find a primary doctor in general yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. so that's what I have on a Friday um yeah and then I'm doing therapy too so I'm I'm trying to take care of not just my physical but my mental health yeah that's important too but it's expensive so I don't know how long I can sustain that yeah, that's okay. also something. But it's good that you're doing it. You're doing both and setting mm-hmm. that up. So for folks who haven't and you can and are able to definitely do it. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the awkwardly random question. <laughs> I'll have I'll have y'all know that Michelle picked this one. <laughs> okay. Let me preface this. We just got on zoom and we didn't know what to ask and i literally googled random questions and the question that popped up was what is something that annoys you about me oh sorry what is something wait let me start over and the question that popped up when i googled was what's one thing that annoys you about me so technically what uh, like what is something that i do that annoys beans but then we were like oh that might start something which I don't think it will. No. <laughs> so the question is, but you don't is annoy now, me. Do, I don't. No. I feel like I know a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Did they tell you why? Do you, like? Do you get that feeling, or have people told you? Um, it's mostly like my sisters and like sometimes my mom when I'm like bugging her too much. Oh, that's normal. You know, we're family. I mean, Eric annoys me. My sister. I, I, we all annoy each other. <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah. Anyways. So the question is now, what is something that annoys you in general? So yeah, I picked the question. The first thing that comes to mind is like when people's phones go off in the movie theater during a movie. Yeah. And for one thing, like, okay, fine. You forgot to silence it, whatever. But then it either happens again or like it keeps ringing. Or I don't know, or they have a, like, if they're texting and their lights are, like, super bright and you're right behind them. Oh, my gosh. Yes. uh, That's, like, come on, man. I paid to watch this movie. Yeah. I paid money for this. It's an hour and a half, two hours. You can handle it, you know? And so that really irks me, seeing, like, a phone light in the movie theater. That's a good one. That's a good one. For me, I would say if I'm walking Mia and there's a dog that's off leash Mm. and that dog comes close to my dog, that pisses, that annoys me. But then that also pisses me off because my dog, she's small and, you know, their dog may be cool or whatever, but, Mm -hmm. you know, Mia can be reactive. And by reactive, I mean, like, she's not going to, she'll like, she feels protective I guess and it'll obviously feel off if some random dog that she doesn't know is just approaching her and Mm -hmm. she's tiny Mm -hmm. so she'll bark at it so you never know bark at it she'll bark at the dog or um you know you never know how the other dog is going to react when she barks so that's like it kind of annoys me when like um dog owners don't leash their dogs um or also when they can't recall their dogs while they're not leashed it's like bro if you can't if your dog does not listen to you on recall you should not have your dog off leash especially in public places or especially places where they're not supposed to be off leash yeah that can be so dangerous Mm -hmm. we just got an email reminder from our leasing office reminding us to keep our dogs on leashes I've seen I always Mila my dog is also Mm -hmm. reactive especially to bigger dogs yeah. Um, so she's always on a leash no matter what. And mm-hmm. I know I can't recall her. Like she will run. <laughs> yeah. So um, and like she's a dog. I mean, yeah, that's what she's gonna do. So yeah. she's always on a leash, and it gets me so nervous 
when we're walking around and I see a dog, especially a bigger dog off a leash, even when they're on a leash, I get nervous, yeah. <laughs> but even more so when they're off a leash and there have been yeah. uh, several people already that I've seen with their dogs without a leash. Um, and some of them, like, as soon as they see us, they'll put their dog on a leash, but like, you still never yeah. know. And yeah. so we legit got an email reminder, like a few days ago from our leasing office, asking us to please keep our dogs yeah. on our leash. I mean, it's part of their policy. Um, so, and also to pick up, you know, their dog's poop. I know. Oh my God. That's another thing too, that actually annoys me. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, there've been several times where I just yell at people to like recall their dog or like, yeah, yeah. Like sometimes for me, it's fine that they're off leash as mm -hmm. long as they don't come like near me yeah then mm -hmm. I'll be fine but then yeah. yeah I've like told people yo recall your dog or like put your dog on a leash but it's mostly recalling that yeah. kind of annoys me more because yeah. it's like your dog should not be near us and you're all the way over there right you so, really yeah. just never know like and I also think like you know maybe their dog is not reactive and they'll listen and stuff but my dog is reactive like you just don't know yeah. what the other dog is going to do yeah so I think just be mindful yeah yeah I definitely always body block mm -hmm. Mia so yeah and that's good I mean she's pretty small so she's tiny she's so cute I know she's feisty though she will she will fight yeah. But I'm just worried how the other dog would react. You know, what I, mean? mm -hmm. I just want to avoid everything. I don't yeah. want to avoid any issues with any other dogs. Yeah. And luckily sure, she's sure. never had any. So I just want to be able to continue to protect her in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Good question. Let us know what uh, annoys y'all. Thanks. <laughs> See, did that start any drama? Look, no. we changed the question. Do I, do I annoy you or do I do anything that annoys you? next question let's see <laughs> that we'll save that for next episode yeah we will no you don't no you don't i'll see i don't know about that maybe i mean we didn't we don't really spend that much time together for me to actually like get annoyed you know yeah even when we lived together we were pretty much we were on the same page for a lot of things when we lived together mm -hmm. yeah so I don't so, know. I'd have to like really, really like pick at something, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head, to be honest. Same, same. Um, Maybe it's your obsession with Harry Potter. Just I'm sorry. Kidding. And why is that annoying? Excuse me, ma'am. I'm a Hufflepuff. I'm just We're kidding. all about compassion, loyalty. I'm a Hufflepuff too. Okay, then. Just... So you know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm kidding. Just... I'm kidding. I'm kidding too, bro. I'm kidding too. Yeah, I forgot you're also Hufflepuff. Okay. Yep. Okay, let's move on to some real let's world ish. On. All right, so this happened almost a month ago, but we're still going to talk about it. So on February 16th, the Alabama Supreme Court uh, issued a ruling declaring personhood to embryos uh, created through IVF and says, basically said that they'll now be considered children. Okay, so for a little bit more context on this case, we got to go back mm -hmm. to uh, December of 2020 when an individual entered a fertility clinic somewhere in Alabama. I don't know exactly where the clinic is. Um, they entered a fertility clinic's uh, cryo cryo preservation unit where they keep the frozen embryos and they have them stored and stuff. Uh, he opened one of the tanks where the embryos were. Um, and mind you, they're frozen, right? So they're sub-zero temps uh, to keep them viable. Uh, he burned himself and he, upon grabbing some of those embryos and uh, dropped them on the ground. And of course, those embryos were destroyed. So those embryos that he did, or I think it was a he, I don't know, the individual destroyed were of some couples who were going undergoing IVF treatment. And so those couples, I think there were three of them, um, who underwent IVF treatment and actually were successful and had kids, they had those frozen embryos for possible use in the future to have more kids, right? Um, so those couples brought this to the court. They brought lawsuits against the fertility clinic uh, and the hospital uh, where the clinic is located. And one of the lawsuits was against the clinic for wrong the wrongful death of a minor act, uh, which the court district dismissed because 
they said that they weren't technically minors. They weren't children. These were embryos. But then the Alabama State Supreme Court, they said, no, 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 we disagree. The wrongful death of a minor actually does apply. So they declared personhood to these embryos, in vitro embryos, not like in utero. And the couples are now able to move forward with this case, with this lawsuit, and they're actually seeking punitive damages or charges. So I don't know what's happening now after that. I don't know where they are in this whole process. But essentially, that's kind of the ruling that that was declared in February. And within the first few weeks of that ruling, there have been several fertility clinics across the state of Alabama who have paused their IVF treatments, which for obvious reasons, this is devastating to a lot of people who either are in, we're just starting IVF treatments to have kids, we're in the process, we're in their last step, you know, for in vitro or for IVF treatments. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know, this is going to have some, some pretty crazy consequences. Yeah, that's wild that because like they're essentially extending that like embryos are children. Basically, it's extra uterine children. (laughs) Yeah. So the way I don't know, I am not too informed of how IVF works, but you never know whether, you know, the egg, the way that they operate or process, you never know which embryo will actually result in like a life in a pregnancy in you know so it you it's like hot like the science is not backing up the argument is what I'm trying to say (laughs) because you never know which egg like which embryo will actually become you know what I mean I I don't know how I'm, I'm saying this right but I just feel like it's a dangerous precedent to state especially because of the consequences of maybe an embryo not actually being born and so like being at fault as the doctor, as the clinic, as the person in trying to get pregnant and all you want is to be like, have a child. Like, I just think that the consequences are, are huge and yeah, it's kind of weird. That now that you that's s- how the court found. Yeah. And now that you say it like that, it makes me think of really how backwards this is because the whole abort, like the abortion argument, right, was so that people could have would have children, right? Like the whole purpose yeah. is for us to have children. But yes, coming for these IVF treatments, these are people that want to have children. Yeah, and you're not letting them. Yeah, well, yeah, they're like how it's not that they're not letting them. It's more like they're holding consequences depending on like what happens to these embryos when you know science and people's bodies don't necessarily mean a hundred percent all of these embryos are going to be birthed into children you know what I mean like yeah it's just I agree that it's counterintuitive it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense but like so many of these clinics are now going to be pausing or I don't know permanently stopping these services altogether so yeah people won't even get the chance to try these treatments yeah, um, because and, they don't want to be held accountable. Exactly. To this. Exactly. Yeah. And like what happens, you know, if you think about why people choose IVF, they choose it for so many different reasons. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and a lot of the times it's it's they just biologically, physically cannot get pregnant the quote unquote natural way, right? So they choose yeah. they go through other options. And we already have limited options around this. And to cut IVF, that's like that's really devastating for a lot of people. Yeah, and it just it's really it doesn't yeah counterintuitive. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, so that's yeah. what's happening. I don't know what's gonna happen with these lawsuits. I think. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. And the Alabama Supreme Court, so the state Supreme Court, like the the U.S. Supreme Court can't do anything, right? Like because the Alabama State Supreme Court has the ultimate say for their state. Is that correct? Is that how I understand my understanding of the law correctly? Yes, unless the federal government cr- like has its own law or creates its own law. Yeah. Um, that supersedes the state law. Okay. But right now, um, 
with what happened with Roe v. Wade, mm-hmm. basically it allows the states to set their own laws in effect for for abortion specifically. But yes, okay. each each state has a Supreme Court that can issue decisions that will only be based off of that state or jurisdiction unless there is federal law that supersedes Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. or if they're in case maybe somebody appeals it Mm -hmm. and maybe takes it up to the Supreme Court Mm -hmm. um, making arguments as to how maybe this might affect um, maybe their constitutional rights. I don't know. I haven't looked into the decision or anything, but yeah, um, they could try to make arguments, Uh. but so the reason I ask that is because the those on the state Supreme Court are elected officials. So you vote. You vote them in or not. So this is mm. where this is probably a really good example of where like you got to go out and vote because these are these are people who are elected into their positions. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep you posted on what's happening with that. This ruling was made on February 16th. So it's been a little over a month, but I haven't really kept up too much as to what's been happening after that. So uh, I'll do a little bit more research. You want to go to the next one? Yes. Next real world-ish is Erin Bushnell, who was 25 years old and an Air Force serviceman, um, set himself on fire or self-emulated in front of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C., and this was on Sunday, so it was um, last week uh, that this happened. And he did it so he can. It was a form of protest to call basically people into action. It's a form of protest to call people into action or call attention to what is happening in Gaza to the people of Palestine that have since October or even before then, but um, what what i guess the media is considering since october the start of a uh, of a genocide or war conflict whatever word people want to use but um people have identified it as a genocide of palestinians ongoing bomb bombings killings starvation of people and so aaron bushnell uh self em- how do you say it? emulated yeah i think so self-immolated because of um so what he did is he provided a statement and he recorded himself while he did it to show the people and to call people into action um to get more involved or to i guess essentially calls us uh like also ask for a ceasefire mm-hmm. um and so yeah i think that this ha we haven't seen i guess this form of protest um in a long time Mm -hmm. from what I have seen especially with something so um yeah we haven't seen anything like this before is what people have been saying in the media and it's pretty interesting to see at least personally how many people haven't really talked about it yeah um or how people aren't really moved by by what he did Mm -hmm. um I felt shock yeah, I was shocked too. I mm-hmm. was shocked, but I also think that um this like people do this as a way to try to get other people to be more involved and to move them into action. And I think that it has for some people um and then others not. Yeah. He took his own life for this issue. And mm-hmm. and the way he took his life you know, that that's a very, very extreme form of protest, which, like you said, we haven't seen it in a long time, but it has happened before. Um, when people uh, have protested certain co- things in the past. Um, I know I've heard things of like, he should have never done that because it won't change anything. And I don't know, but people haven't really, it was all over TikTok for a little bit, like maybe like that first day. And then it like, people just kind of moved on. And I just don't mm-hmm. know how, I, f- I don't know how I feel about all of that. I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm saying. Like, I don't know how to process what he did. Yeah. I think it speaks true to what he was saying. Yeah. So one of his, um, 
he posted a Twitch link before oh, on yeah. his Facebook page. It says, uh, the caption says, many of us like to ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery mm -hmm. or the Jim Crow South or apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? Their answer is, you're doing it right now. And in his video, he also said that, you know, while he was setting himself on fire, that he will no longer be complicit in genocide and that he was about to engage in extreme act of protest. But compared mm -hmm. to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of their colonizers, it's not extreme at all. Yep. This is what the ruling wow. class decided will be normal. And he shouted, free Palestine. Um, it's shocking yeah it's shot I had to like really just sit and reflect and I didn't watch the video I think it was up for a little bit before they took it down or you I don't think you can watch it anymore but I couldn't get myself to watch it and I don't know mm -hmm. if that's also part of the problem but he reached a, I mean he must have really I mean he reached a point where what else can like what else can I do and I can't I can no longer live like move on with my life knowing what is happening to thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of people babies mm -hmm. you know children women so yeah I, I don't know what that's like right to reach that that point mentally and then to take yeah. action on that yeah I, don't I just know, hope people take it like yeah you know I hope it does mobilize people more and including myself like there's obviously more than I can do as well but I just I do hope that more comes out of that yeah I definitely think that I agree with what he's saying. Yeah. And that was his decision to do what he did. Yeah. But I do think that we all need to be more, I guess, enraged by what is happening and don't like do our part and do what we can in this. And I think that that was his purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and I also don't think that you know, for the people that are saying, like, why did he do this? Like, it's not going to change anything. I don't think that that's true. Yeah. Um. I do think that people have, um, I think they paid attention to what happened. And I think for some people, it really did move them. And the point was that I guess it was to be shocking and to have people talking about it. Mm -hmm. But I guess now the point is to, to do action in addition to the feeling of, yeah what he what he i guess influenced mm -hmm. so we, yeah I just, we all just got to keep paying attention and and i guess use use that shock or that enragement that rage that enragement that rage to to mobilize to do something mm -hmm. yeah and that makes me think about um how people have voted in the primaries um or uncommitted so yeah I think um Michigan started the trend of people voting uncommitted so not voting for Joe Biden uh for the Democratic presidency and just voting mm -hmm. uncommitted to show and to yeah to show the the president and the Democrats that you know people are not willing to vote for Joe Biden, who mm -hmm. has been complicit in the genocide. And so I know folks here in Minnesota had been organizing that and a good number of people did vote uncommitted um, for um, for the primaries. And I think that in April for Wisconsin, that's also going to be pe what people are organizing. And that actually caused, um, I think, Kamala Harris to say that they were asking for a ceasefire of six mm. weeks um and so six weeks isn't enough obviously and six weeks is not a permanent ceasefire so yeah that was just interesting to see their response to people organizing and it's been pretty cool to see how you know people are actually starting to see how their power and their voice can make a difference mm -hmm. in the in these elections because mm -hmm. it can yeah yeah so we just got to keep that going. Last real world ish, the Oscars. Uh, I didn't watch it, so I don't I know what to say either. except for that they happened. Yeah, same. I didn't not watch it either. You um, did it not. I did not. <laughs> I did not watch it. 
at all. Um, I was going to catch some of the, um, like the, I was just going to look on TikTok to see what was up. I know but I some, haven't. Yeah, I haven't either. I know some people, like uh, people who've won awards, went up to their speeches and called for a ceasefire. And there was a protest happening right outside where the Oscars were happening yeah and that's what i saw in clips um no but no i haven't i have not seen the oscars yet i might watch the rerun mm. and maybe we could talk about it later yeah sounds good okay so we're gonna move on to the main topic and wow. we're basically just gonna go through some relationship scenarios because michelle got me into the new season of love is blind i got you into the season look you gave me some I met scenarios. You, I was watching it. Yeah. And and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch it. I ended up binging the hell out of that show and I finished it in three days. So this is based basically Girl. how I got this idea was because I was watching Love is Blind, and then I was also watching one day on Netflix. Did you watch mm-hmm. that? I did not get a chance to watch that because I was so focused on Love is Blind. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I that's on my list. <laughs> So we're going to talk about just general like scenarios that we have seen um, on these shows and like what we think about them. Um, And then also just other general scenarios that I guess people that are, I guess, kind of common or maybe not common and see Mm -hmm. how we feel about them. Okay. Are we naming names for Love is Blind? Sure. Why not? Okay. I don't know if that mattered or not. All right. Anyway, so... There was so for, uh, so for mm-hmm. people who haven't seen Love is Blind season oh, yeah. six, I believe this Spoilers. is going to be a spoiler. So yeah, if you're trying to watch it, pause, go watch it and then come back. I'm pretty sure if you're listening to this, you've probably already seen the shows that we're talking about. So yeah. Or at least have seen clips on TikTok because that's how yeah. I knew that certain things were happening because people were yeah. talking about it. And we still have, at this point, all of the episodes came out except for the reunion. So this Mm -hmm. is where we're at. If anything else comes out, maybe that'll change our minds. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Well, maybe. Maybe by the time this comes out, the reunion will will already be out. I forgot when it's supposed to come out. But So one of the couples, Jeremy and Laura, they became engaged uh, from the pods. I think it's Jeremy and Chelsea. No, it's Jimmy and Chelsea. Oh, sorry. It's two J's. You are right. There are two J's. Yeah. But okay, Jeremy... sorry. These names are sound the same. <laughs> no, you see. All right. Okay, you're right. All right. Jeremy, Jeremy, you're right. Jeremy All right. and Laura. Laura. Okay, but... Laura. Yeah. Some context, though. Jeremy was stuck, was like deciding between two girls in the pods. Okay, he ended up going with Laura and proposing to her, but he was also dating Sarah Ann in the pods. Okay, Sarah Ann ended up, I think, DMing Jeremy. So, okay, after the pods, they move in together. They start living kind of their lives as a couple, as an engaged (laughs) couple, engaged couple. Yeah. She got a ring. Sarah Ann messages Jeremy I don't know exactly what the message said, but something along the lines of like, if it doesn't work, the door is still open. I'm still Mm -hmm. here. Yeah. But she knew that they were engaged. Yeah, she did. Okay. All right. So that happens. Then in one of the episodes, Laura and Jeremy get into it because Jeremy ends up staying out until five or six in the morning. Uh, and turns out he spent part of the night or a large large part of the night talking with Sarah Ann and then he ends up driving her home yeah Yeah. (laughs) talking talking they both claim nothing happened they legit just talked and then he dropped her off who knows you will never we're never gonna know what actually happened yeah and then Laura's like well that's not okay and that's super inappropriate and Mm -hmm. Later on, they actually ended up breaking off their engagement and they're no longer together that I know of. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Who who was it? Is someone in the wrong? Are there multiple people in the wrong? Bless you, Mila. My dog just sneezed. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what were you thinking when you watched that episode? 
the drama is juicy. That's what I thought. Yep. Um, I think Jeremy and Sarah Ann are both in the wrong. I didn't understand her reasoning as to why she sent him the text message knowing full well that he was engaged. Um, that's just something I, I you know, I stand for like integrity and self-worth and morals. And so like, I think he made pretty clear his decision when he didn't choose her and chose yeah. Laura yeah. and was pretty clear about that. And also it's implied like keeping the door open or like if it doesn't work out with Laura, I think it's implied given the show that like obviously he may try to reach out to her. You know what I mean? Like just saying that and that's her reasoning, like does it really make sense to me? Because in a show like this, I think if it doesn't work out with one you obviously try to work out with the other one and I think that that's implied I don't think she mm. really needed to message him and I also that think that that says a lot about maybe about her self-worth or like not being able to respect boundaries yeah. be because I think he clearly made one when he didn't choose her and I know she kept saying that her feelings are valid and I do agree that her feelings are valid mm -hmm. I just don't agree by the way that she went about it yeah um and I, uh, yeah, I think that, yeah. And Jeremy, obviously he's in the wrong because he was the one in the relationship with Laura. And I think he should have obviously nipped it in the butt when she reached out to him and he didn't. I think mm -hmm. he kind of hearted it and didn't respond, which mm -hmm. I think is an acknowledgement, but not of like a shutdown of what mm -hmm. her message said. Mm -hmm. so he definitely was in the wrong and you know we don't know what actually happened between them um but you know you can only speculate but still it's not okay to do that especially if like Sarah Ann is technically your ex like yeah that's just a no yeah technically your ex and also she knows that you are engaged and so mm -hmm. no matter how he and Laura are doing, whether they're on, they're like cruising through their engagement or they're having issues. That's the, between them two. And regardless, he's still engaged. Yeah. And like, that's just not cool. In my opinion, I agree with you. I don't think, I think they were both in the wrong. And I think mm -hmm. Sarah Ann should have never sent that text. And I think Jeremy should have never responded even with liking the message, like none of that. Yeah. But I do think Jeremy is definitely more at wrong than Sarah Ann because mm -hmm. he was in the relationship with Laura yeah. and he was an asshole to her like yeah like I understand that especially in this experience where there may be liking of more than one person like I think that makes sense that that may happen but the way that he went about it was just very wrong like he you know what I mean there's ways to maybe go about it mm -hmm. uh, and he just handled that very wrong so yeah yeah yeah, I think he kind of let, left the door open a little bit too for her. And I think that's he the did. issue. He right? did. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Versus versus shutting it down right then and there. Like, hey, I'm engaged. Uh, this is not going to work out. Thank you for the message. Yeah. But this, I'm, I'm going to be very clear with you on this, blah, 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 blah. But he just liked it. And so he basically cracked that window or door open for her, even though he's engaged to someone else yeah so I think what he did was wrong yeah for sure and then I don't know why Sarah Ann would want or at least want somebody like that like knowing that he's capable of doing that yeah you know or like I don't know I don't know who anybody who would want to be like a second choice mm -hmm. essentially to mm -hmm. this scenario yeah let us know if y'all have seen this episode or se seen this season and what you think about this particular situation yeah. This yeah. is a, there's a lot of drama in this season drama 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 all right now we can go on to jimmy the other j <laughs> his was called some Jim jiminy crickets jiminy crickets <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny did he watch it too the whole season yeah he did okay Ooh, he actually watched he actually watched the last episode before me because I was in Milwaukee, obviously, and I mm -hmm. didn't have time to watch it. So mm -hmm. I didn't. I actually got spoiled, and then I watched it. Okay, on Sunday morning. So okay, gotcha. Yeah. 
Okay, so Jimmy is engaged to Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Chelsea is interesting to me. She... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That <laughs> they came up. <laughs> I can't keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to lapse. And I didn't mean to sound judgy. <laughs> I, I find, I just, okay. Throughout, yeah. throughout their time together, Michelle, it seemed to me, right, that she constantly sought out reassurance from him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and was constantly asking him, like kind of looking for things, looking for things to go wrong in a sense mm. or looking for, like asking like, but you're not feeling any doubts about me or I don't know, like looking for some sort of answer from him, but constantly asking him how he's doing, like how he feels about them and stuff like that mm -hmm. and would get upset with, certain things right like mm -hmm. uh didn't kiss her for the day or whatever or once that day or yeah didn't hold her hand like you know little things like that that she was needing or wanting he wasn't meeting those particular needs and so she would voice them and it would lead to a conversation then to an argument and then mm -hmm. there was a few moments that they were like really really pissed off at each other and he was like I was just hanging out with friends what do you want me to do I went out one night like what's wrong with that she was wanting him to be home with her she doesn't want to be with someone who's going out all the time and he said he's not it's a lot of that that's what I got yeah. from it yeah yeah and then one of the conversations Jimmy calls Chelsea clingy and cling mm -hmm. and Chelsea was like well that's fucking rude and she's like super mm -hmm. hurt about it Mm -hmm. your thoughts yeah oh wait what are you I started with the last one so I guess well okay. before we get into the whole clingy thing I do think that she was looking for reassurance but at the same time she all was also is uh, sorry I can't speak she was also making it seem like he needed a fix whatever she was feeling mm. like especially like when they were away and and in their honeymoon or whatever or yeah. after engagement honeymoon phase I think they were in the DR it. yeah in Dominican Republic um she was like you need to fix it or like you need to like she wanted him to fix how she was feeling and granted he was doing shady shit too mm -hmm. to maybe make her feel that way um uh, but I I can see that they both just had different issues and different ways of communicating yeah. um but yeah, I definitely don't think that she should have like counted on him to like fix how she was feeling. I think it it just the way that they communicated was so interesting and weird. That's why I think I'd like watching reality shows and like these kind of shows because I guess you really see people's like insecurities come out or like their way of communicating and their way of working through like issues and fights and stuff and I thought it was pretty funny when she met her when they met his parents mm -hmm. and then he was like oh we've had a lot like several fights and she's like we've never had any fights and it's like bro what like are you like that's is all this they've normal been having to you yeah I'm like is this normal to you to be fighting and like these are just discussions or whatever um so yeah I thought that was interesting too but you go first on okay. what you thought about Jimmy calling Chelsea clingy so we had this conversation, you and I, before this, before I had even seen this show. Yeah. And I had the opinion of that can be really hurtful to call someone clingy. And I would fucking hate that if someone called me clingy. Mm -hmm. And after seeing this show and seeing how she was acting towards him, you could say that was pretty clingy behavior. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would call my partner straight up clingy, but I, I mean, mean, the way he said it was like, damn, you're being so clingy. Like that was really, that just, way that he, I he forgot how like he said it. How did he say it? I don't remember. I heard, well, I remember him saying like, well, you, you've been a little clingy lately. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's how I think I got it. But when you hear that, well, when I hear that, I don't care how nicely you say it, you're using the word clingy. And to yeah. me, that's like, damn, that fucking sucks to hear. Yeah. So clingy to you is a bad thing. It's a hurtful thing. I don't know about bad. Mm. It, for me, yeah. like, maybe there's another way to say it. 
mm-hmm. but it's still like clingy just has a bad taste in my mouth mm-hmm. and at yeah, the I same time that. at the same time she was kind of exhibiting some clinginess like that is it yeah. is what it is yeah um and I know she mentioned that she has been cheated on so many times in the past I think she's a uh a, a flight attendant so she's gone for prolonged mm. periods of time and I do mm-hmm. remember her kind of mentioning something like that and I can only mm-hmm. imagine how when you've been cheated on on multiple occasions or whatever it is your history it might be hard to develop trust or security in your relationships moving forward at the same time that clinginess is affecting the relationship yeah yeah I mean, I agree that she was exhibiting some clinginess behavior, (laughs) especially when she was like, you, you never even looked at me today or you never kissed me or you never, like, she always kept saying you never did this today or something. And I think that personally, I would not want somebody to be like that with me. Like Mm -hmm. you never kissed me. You never looked at me. You're not holding my hand. Like. I personally don't like that level of attachment. I know that maybe there's a level of reassurance that you need to provide for your for your partner, but to always be like super like there all the time because it kind of sounded like they spent all their time together and yeah. one time they wanted to go out, she got upset that he was gone or that she didn't go with him or mm-hmm. yeah, and it was that whole fight was a little bit strange because she kept bringing things up that maybe weren't true, like she right. was saying how she was with like Jessica, right? Or that she would or he was with uh he brought up that girl that apparently his friend that he had sex with before. Mm-hmm. And so like all these things were just like girl what are you saying like you know Mm -hmm. what I mean like uh and maybe that had to do with her being drunk or her insecurities or whatever but the way that she was going about it you could tell was affecting their relationship and maybe there were some things that we didn't see that Jimmy was doing that was causing these insecurities which could be real too Mm -hmm. um but I don't think that maybe with some people using the word clingy will be a trigger for them obviously it was for Chelsea so I guess if that is a thing in your relationship knowing like what may be a trigger to your partner Mm -hmm. um, I personally don't think you know being like hey like maybe your actions are a little bit clingy like I don't necessarily personally take that a wrong way but I can see how others do and should be respected by their partners but see how you worded it? You said your actions were a little clingy versus saying you are clingy. Yeah. Yeah. To me, to me, those are two different things. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. I would rather you tell me like, hey, your actions towards me lately have been a little clingy or attached versus yeah. like you are clingy. Cause then that's like a a character trait that you're po- attributing to myself. Yeah. And once you do that, it's hard to separate that like Mm -hmm. am am I a clingy person or is it that I just my actions have been a little clingy and that can change yeah but I feel like you are good with like conceptualizing these things and like Mm. doing the difference versus Mm -hmm. like some people I feel like you just use the word clingy and they already get upset so like it doesn't matter how you say it it's the fact that you just said the word clingy Mm -hmm. and I don't know I feel like that can like saying someone can never say a certain word obviously be respectful to your partner right, right. like but to have someone say you can never use this word towards me I think that that's really controlling yeah but also those words can be triggering so you got to have that yeah, conversation with your partner tri- yeah have that conversation yeah 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 come to an agreement yeah. if you both agree that yeah. you're never going to use a certain word against each other you know it is yeah. what it is. and if it's clingy let us know if that's that word for you <laughs> Yeah, let us know how, yeah, how upsetting that is to y'all. Yeah. I just wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't feel good to be told that. I yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's not like, I don't know how to explain it. It's, yeah, I feel like if you come from a space where, like, you're not trying to hurt your partner, you're just trying to have them understand how their actions are making you feel. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, I don't know, that's how I view certain things. Yeah. It's not like. I know that my partner's not intentionally trying to hurt me. They're just right. trying to explain certain things. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But I can see, yeah. 
I can see how that can be hurtful or that can be disrespectful, annoying. That all can be true too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just talk with your partners. Mm -hmm. What do people think? Yeah. Let Let us us know know below. All right. I didn't watch one day. Yeah. But you kind of gave me a little bit of the rundown, right? A 20 year long-term friendship that started after college graduation didn't have a romantic relationship, but they did end up falling in love at some point. Mm, that's what it seems like. Yes. Okay. Wait, this is a so new show, right? It, yes. It was, it's based off a, excuse me. It's based off a book. And then that book was made into a movie oh. with Anne Hathaway. And then obviously they re they did a, a series recently. Um, so yeah. Okay. So spoilers then. So spoilers. I'm right. sure people have watched this too or know the story or understand okay, what it's about. So then when they do start to, when they decide to start a romantic relationship, one of them ends up dying. Yep. Okay. The girl ends up dying. Spoiler. Okay. I want to hear Spoiler. your thoughts. <laughs> or maybe should I give my thoughts first since I've never seen this? Yeah. Give your thoughts first. Yeah. All right. The question we have here is should they have gone together sooner or should they have just moved on? And how long is too long to wait? Mm -hmm. So they were in a friendship for 20 years. Essentially, yeah. Nothing happened. Um, well, I think that they had like they kind of knew that they liked each other, but they never really acted on it. But then later in in later on in the years they did eventually have sex Mm -hmm. um and but didn't like form a relationship but then Mm -hmm. later then they decided to get into a relationship yeah so i don't know but essentially have been in and out Mm -hmm. of their lives throughout like their growth as people okay i don't know when is too long to wait i don't know if i don't particularly believe there is a a timeline for this kind of stuff and relationships are hella complicated Mm -hmm. so it's not the same for everyone if they were really in love and they wanted to try this 20 years into a friendship or 20 years of being in each other's lives that's cool it's but it's so tragic that soon after one of them ends up dying that fucking sucks yeah i think and i I, maybe i need to watch this to really Mm -hmm. have an opinion on this but if they were in this friendship and then they ended up having sex at some point or whatever like you could like what if it was clear that they liked each other I'm not sure what's what exactly was stopping them from getting together sooner Mm -hmm. I think I'd have to watch I'd have to watch it but yeah so I think earlier on the reason why they didn't start a relationship was because he didn't I'm talking about the series here people okay series (laughs) he didn't want to I guess wasn't ready to commit to a to her or to one person or to her maybe specifically um and he, so he was really open with like uh just having sexual experiences with other people and really into his image and his career um and also um he also got married and had mm. a child i think she okay. also was on the point of marrying somebody but didn't um, and she had affairs with other people, a lot, you know what I mean? So there's a lot there's of things lot. that happen in the series. Um, so yeah, I guess life is why. Okay. That makes more sense because mm-hmm. in my head, I'm thinking, and cause I have never seen it in my head. I'm thinking like they've been in their lot in each other's lives for this long. There's a lot of love there. They ended up be- being intimate together. What is stopping them? Like, mm-hmm. why did they take so long? But yes, mm-hmm. I mean, when you're engaged to someone else or when you marry someone else and then have a child with them, obviously mm-hmm. that's going to play a mm-hmm. role. Yeah. How did you feel about the show? I think I got, was mad about the show. Yeah. Because I just felt like he led her on and Ooh. she like stayed hung up on him. Okay. And she shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, I understand that they both had their own like lives, but I think that she was still hung up on him 
and they he was hung up on her eventually i think mm-hmm. he in general it seemed like he was more into the idea of being with her when she was like when they were older versus like she was really into the idea of being with him when they were younger mm-hmm. for some reason like stayed in touch i think that she should have she had the opportunity i think to be really happy with other people but i felt like her relationship with him really set her back i think in the romantic aspect yeah um i don't know i just feel like if you see the show and you see like how he was towards her even though i guess he did really love her in the end it just kind of seemed like a waste of time Mm. (laughs) in my opinion i don't know that's right um and i obviously am you know me or maybe you don't but I in general like am a romantic like I Mm -hmm. love love stories but I'm also really realistic and I just think that this is like a tragic maybe love story in a way because um at the end they didn't really end up being together but it but it wasn't at the end they didn't at the end they didn't get to be together because one of them dies yeah versus 20 years later they ended up together and they could have lived happily ever after happily (laughs) maybe (laughs) like maybe they were actually meant to be and then just maybe the universe had other plans i don't know well the universe spoke the universe spoke for real loud and clear Um, yeah so uh, yeah i don't know I just, I think you should watch it. People should watch it. Maybe in terms of the question of what was the question? Should they, should have, they gotten have gotten together? together? Um, I think she tried. I think there's different instances where she tried to, or maybe he tried to like gauge as to where they were. And yeah, like I said, I don't think he was committed to her earlier on. She kind of stayed hung up on him. They both had their own partners at some point. And, you know, he got married, he had a kid. Like there were cer- cer- certain things that, um, I think that they should have at least tried to gotten together sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that she should have waited. Yeah. Or maybe she didn't wait. And maybe life just happened. And somehow they were able to reconnect. And mm-hmm. yeah. So it could be. I think that there's different ways to look at this story. Um, and some people could argue that she wasn't waiting. You know, she did continue her life. She became a successful author. Um, stuff like that. And she continued with her life. Um, but I do still think she was still hung up on him. And so I just think that she should have just, or they both should have just moved, moved on Mm -hmm. and just stayed friends. I don't know. Unless they couldn't stay friends. Yeah, that too. Because if she was hung up on him or, or maybe even he still was too, like there was still something there and it's too painful to be with that, with someone platonically Mm -hmm. to have a friendship Mm -hmm. Like maybe yeah. you gotta cut that shit loose too. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. That goes into our next question. Oh my gosh. Can you be friends with your ex? Okay, we're done talking about shows. We're just gonna move yeah, on to these relationship yeah. questions and scenarios. Yep, scenarios. Okay. Uh, um <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. It I think so, yeah. It's not very not for probable. Me. It's not very probable because your ex is your ex. It's someone that you shared certain intimacies with, that you had a relationship with more than just a friendship. And for you to be friends again, that would have to be on a very platonic level. But how do you get to that level when you had that history? And and like, like I said, I think it is possible. Mm-hmm. But I think it's rare. Mm-hmm. And and you have to both be on the same page because you could try to be friends with your ex and your ex is not trying to be your friend. Mm-hmm. And what if you're in a relationship and you're trying mm-hmm. to be friends with your ex who does not care that you're in a relationship? Yeah. And I think things can get complicated there. I agree with what you're saying. But it, you said it's not possible for you? Yeah, not not possible for me, but I agree generally that it, mm-hmm. it is it can be probable for certain people. It is possible, y'all. I have I have faith. <laughs> you have faith that you'll be friends with your no, exes? No, not for myself. I have faith that people can be friends with their exes. Okay. Okay, got it. Next. <laughs> I got faith. <laughs> All right, let's move on. That was funny. <laughs> okay. 
okay. All right. Uh, you and your partner have been together for a couple of years when they forget your birthday. You wait all day for them to acknowledge it, but by the next morning, they still haven't said a word. Would you end the relationship? How many years? I mean, the question just says a couple of years. You so could take that as two or however many you want. <sighs> two years. All right. We're gone. We're done. The fuck is that, bro? I'm just kidding. Um, the Dang. ego in the ego in me would be saying we would end it. I mean, if this person literally has not said a word about my birthday, and I'm the, I'm the type of person that like talks about my birthday. It talks about like, oh, it's like January, and like my birthday's coming up. Like, oh, like I constantly do that. So for the person to not say anything, then it'd be kind of uh-huh. weird. So then I don't know if that would actually lead to a breakup, though, but that would definitely cause a strain in the relationship. It'll cause an argument for sure. Hell yeah, I would be really hurt. I would be so hurt by that. Yeah, same. I don't know if I would like just break up, break up with someone because of that, but I think it is a red flag, though. Yeah. And and I wouldn't judge anybody for breaking up with someone because of that. Yeah, same. Yeah. That would be so hurtful. Mm hmm. I would not be okay with that. Yeah. So I'm the same as you. Yeah. I think if I would have been talking about it and because I get excited um, and there's just like no mention of it, no plan, no nothing, then I feel like that would really be hurtful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Let us know what you think about this question. For real. Okay. Next scenario. You've been with your partner for a little while when you find out they cheated in their last relationship. It wasn't that they were unhappy or that they were problems in the relationship. They just slipped up. How do you do that? Would you end the relationship? I'm leaning towards possibly yes. Because, yeah, how do you do that? How do you just slip up? I think it's one thing when you're in a relationship and you're both like, toxic to each other or whatever and you both cheat or you or you're hurt and you go on a break and you and you or you say you go on a break uh which we're gonna get into actually after this Mm -hmm. um or just like shit goes shit goes wrong and you end up cheating or whatever or they cheat on you and you cheat on that I don't know things can happen right that's different than if it was just like no we were great I just slipped that's different so to me I think I really? would probably. That's different it. from any of the other times someone would have cheated. I mean, it's cheating either way. Yeah. But, but That's what I'm, I'm saying, I mean, it, yes, it is cheating either way. But when you're, when you are in a relationship and you're happy and you're both good and you still cheat, I don't know. What's to say that you wouldn't do that to me when we're good and solid. I mean, but then also it doesn't yeah. mean, it doesn't mean for sure that they're going to do that to me, but that's, that's. You, I think I would have the what if. Yeah, so you would break up with them or end the relationship. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I think I'm leaning towards that too um, because it doesn't make any sense, first of all. I'm like, if somebody says this, I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. First of all, I want to know, like, how long have I been in this relationship with this partner and this partner not telling me, like, mm-hmm. what happened? Because usually I think that when, you know, when you start being in a relationship with someone, you kind of get to... You ask them about their relationship history, like when was their most recent relationship and how did that end? At least I like to know that kind of thing. So, you know, I would ask these questions. So like, does this mean this person lied to me when I Mm. asked them about what happened to their last relationship? And I also don't believe like um, that they just slipped. I think when someone cheats, I think that definitely says more about the the person who cheated. Um, So... There must have been something, yeah. Uh, not that the other person did, but within themselves that, like, either they weren't happy or that there were problems or there was something that is within them that had caused them to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would want to know that. It doesn't make sense why they're now telling me. Like, did I find this out in a different way? Did this guy tell me? Right. Like, is it actually true? And then I think in that inherently would make me not trust him. So yeah, I guess would maybe lead to a breakup because yeah. why are you not being truthful? And yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'd always have that what if. 
Mm -hmm. I'd always like have that question in my head, which I don't want to have that. Yeah, which I think would be different if someone did cheat in the past and told me initially. Right. And I already understood that. And maybe, you know, whatever they had told me ahead of time. And then that would be like, oh, like, thanks for telling me. I understand that that was maybe something that you did in the past. And that's not something that you do now and will be doing in the future. But I think that omitting of that information is sus and mm-hmm. shady. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Mish. Yeah. Okay, next scenario. You and your partner have been watching a Netflix series together. You find out that they watched the season finale without you. Would you end the relationship? Yep, that's it. It's over. <laughs> that's the hill I'm going to die on right there. Just kidding. That's funny. <laughs> Tell me, Mish, what are your, what are your thoughts? That actually happened where Love is Blind. It just happened, too. This was watched the series finale without me. So you broke up we were watching together. Yeah. I'm just kidding. That's a lot. I No. No, we did a breakup. Um, so, yeah. No, I don't think that that's, like, breaking up worthy. So, no. That's not a deal either. breaker for me. Yeah, me either. Mm-hmm. That was an easy one. Yeah. All right. A lighthearted one compared yeah. to this cheating and Well, let's get back friends. to another heavier one. Okay, let's go. Giving your partner the silent treatment. Mm-hmm. Is that a is that a deal breaker? Is that deal a red breaker? flag? Um I think it's concerning for for me personally. I am the type of person that likes to communicate and like being straightforward. I mean what I say and I say what I mean um and so I'm pretty direct and so mm, to have someone just not talk to me for whatever reason and me not knowing what happened or what was the reason it it is a little bit like yo like, like what happened are you okay and I'm the type of person that likes to like come to a solution right away um and so it could be alarming, but at the same time, I do understand if someone needs their time to maybe either think about things, process, cool down, whatever they need to do. But I would at least hope that like that person would tell me that that's yeah. what they're doing instead of just like not saying anything uh, or like just not responding or like just leaving. Like, I think that that's a weird, at least for me, I don't like that form of communication, but I can see how some people communicate that way. But I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. I don't know. Yeah, that's my thing is if you don't want to talk, that's fine. I think it's, I don't think it's okay to force someone to talk if you're not, if they don't want to, right? Yeah. At the same time, I don't think it's fair to leave them in the dark. Mm -hmm. I'm one to get really anxious, Mm. not knowing what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. And in, and what what ha- what will happen in my head is I'm gonna run through all these things that could potentially be going on in your head, mm-hmm. and they could be really really bad things, and I could be like just going in circles around them mm-hmm. when it could be mm-hmm. nothing related to what I'm thinking, and so I'm stressing myself out for no reason. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, like there's no certainty as to what's going on. So if you don't want to talk, I like I would want my partner, whoever, right? Whoever it is, my friend or whatever Mm -hmm. to let me know, Hey, you know, I'm not, I don't really want to talk right now. I just kind of want some space. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm going to be, I'm just going to get and take some space for a little bit. Cool. Yeah. (laughs) Respect. Yeah. Respect, (laughs) respect, do your thing, you know, do your thing. I'll be over here uh, in the other room. Yeah. But if you just walk away, that's another thing. It's like in my head, I'm thinking, shit, what did I say? What, like, what did I do? I, I'm I'm automatically thinking I did something wrong. Mm-hmm. And maybe I did, but at least like I, it would, I think it's fair to the other person to tell them or say, yeah. hey, I, I'm feeling a little bit hurt by this conversation or by what you said. I don't want to talk about it right now, but I am going to take some space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the thing is like I, the silent treatment when it's not, when you're not telling someone you're going to give them the silent treatment. 
Yeah. So you want someone to tell you, I'm not going to talk to you. I want someone to tell me I'm not, if, if they're not ready to talk, that they're going to need some space. Yeah. And I think the person who's being told that, I think it's also okay. Like you should be respecting that. Yeah. Yeah. If you force someone to talk to you, I feel like that might make things worse. Yeah, I think so too. And at the same time, if they never want to talk to you about it, or like you just like brush yeah. it under the rug, I think that can also harbor certain feelings that over time can pile up. Yeah, because I'm thinking like, how long have people given their partners the silent treatment? Because I don't feel like I can go that long, like staying mad or like being silent with my partner. Like, I think the most I've gone is like, maybe like 15 minutes or something Mm -hmm. like I don't know like you know what I mean like yeah I'm just not the type of person to like not say anything you know so right right I yeah it's interesting um you know how much because I think it would worry me like similar to what you said like if it is a long period of time of just like not talking or like not talking about the issue it's like how long is enough time? Like, how much time do you need? Like, 24 right. hours? Like, do you need 30 minutes? Do you need mm-hmm. two days? Like, what's up? Yeah. Kidding. Give me a deadline here. <laughs> I do. I do need a, I need a timeline. Because oh, at some point, God. I'm like, what's what's wrong? What's going on? What's going on? on? Yep. What's going on? That's right. Yeah, I don't know. So I think, so, I think yeah. we're on the same page about it. But I wonder how many people have because I know people do this obviously because we're talking about it and people obviously talk about these things so I wonder how long people have I guess done the quote-unquote silent treatment with their partner so yeah that'd be interesting to know if you feel comfortable letting us know let us know yeah I'd be curious yeah okay last one Ross and Rachel from Friends they were on a break Mm -hmm. well were they on a break he said he slept with someone during said break. Did he cheat? Is that a, like what he what he did? Was that okay? Was it not okay? Were they actually on a break? What? How did you, how do you perceive that situation? This is funny. <laughs> um. Okay. So how did the break happen again? I think that there was some sort of argument that yeah, happened between Ross and Rachel, remember. and she was just like. I'm done. What did she say? I don't remember either. I think she said, I think I need a break. Okay. She said that. I don't know if she, I I can't remember exactly the line. Yeah. And then I think you said, okay, I guess we're on a break then. Right. Right? I think, I think they both said the word break. Mm -hmm. And then he went out to the bar or whatever and was like, got drunk and then slept with someone that day, that night Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that they got on a break um so I I would I would say that they were on a break I mean it sounds like she offered the break and he said okay break then that's what you want I'm gonna give you the break and so it sounds like they were on a break to me but hut break yep um what do you think do you think they were on a break yeah I mean they both said break yeah okay and so what did you say did he cheat because Mm -hmm. he slept with someone on the break Mm -hmm. I feel like people are gonna hate me with this answer oops I don't think that he cheated Uh, explain yourself because I feel like break is short for a break yeah I just feel like what is the point then of like like if you want to break from someone then you actually don't want to be in a relationship so you're essentially breaking up you just don't want to say the word break up I see it as like a pause. A what pause are we? In the a relationship. pause in time? <laughs> so anything that happens within that pause is what? I don't know, man. Every relationship is different. I know. I guess it really, yeah, I guess every relationship is different. But technically, the way that I see a break is basically leading to a breakup. You just don't want to say you want to break up. You're just saying you want to break. And if there are no like ground rules established, I would assume that we're broken up. That's fair. If there's no established rules, yes, I can get that. If you establish mm-hmm. rules and say, 
you know, let's, let's be on this break. I'm going to spend some time with my family, you know, for the next couple of weeks, let's like spend some time apart, like not even talking, but just kind of working on ourselves. We're not going to be seeing other people, but we're just going to be kind of doing our own thing and let's come back and try this again. I think that's fair to establish those rules. Yeah. But they, but in the show, they didn't, they didn't do anything. They didn't do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think he cheated, but I think break and breakup are two different things, but I think a break can lead to a breakup. Yes. Yeah. I think it can lead to it, but like, I don't, I, I'm just, it's interesting. I mean, people see it differently. Mm -hmm. I think you just gotta, you have to. So then that means like, while you're apart from each other, you're still committed to each other. If that's what you agree on, yeah. But in your scenario that you gave, that... Yeah, I mean, I'm... Yeah, you would still be like, committed to the person, but you're you're having some space from each other. It's kind of like a prolonged silent treatment. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I don't... I don't oh understand God. how people... This is what I don't understand about people sometimes with relationships, because people ask, like, you can't have, like... I don't know. It sounds like what you're describing is just like someone is taking a trip without the other person, Mm. but you're still communicating and talking. Well, no, you wouldn't be communicating or talking. So you just wouldn't be talking at all with your partner for that month because you're on a break. Yeah. And so you're still expected to be committed to that person because you're not even talking. Well, you wouldn't be talking to other people like that. And you wouldn't even be talking to your partner either. Right. Like that doesn't make any sense. I mean, some people need that space. I don't know. I don't know if I could do it, but I feel like people like that's a thing. Otherwise, why is, why does, why is the concept, why does the concept of a break even exist? Like, I think people say that and use that for whatever reason. I think people use break Mm-hmm. in a way with where people who have been in long-term relationships and they actually break up but then eventually get back together and they mm. call that a break yeah yeah yeah. that's a good point I don't think people are like yeah let's get on a break I don't want to talk to you you don't want to talk to me but we're not gonna talk to anybody but we're gonna live separately and we'll come back in a month <laughs> <laughs> come back for your follow-up yeah like we'll see how we're doing let's check in then and if you still want to be in a relationship then we're back at it oh my like, that gosh doesn't, like that's I mean, realistically I mean, like yeah. i feel like people just say oh we were on a break but you were broken up and you eventually found your way back to each other and so that was a break now in your relationship right right i guess maybe if you're in really good therapy and that works out for you maybe that break is actually a break I mean, I think you're thinking about it too in technical terms. Technically, if you want to look at the definition of a breakup, yeah, I guess you were broken up. Mm -hmm. I think for some people, like when you've been with someone for a certain amount of time and you really can't imagine being without them, but you reach this point where you're either always fighting or it's like something is off. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fully walk away, but you also can't be there fully. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't do either or. So the yeah. break is where you go. And, but I don't know what that looks like for that. Yeah. That looks different for people. Yeah. I just I don't, don't know why yeah. we're afraid to call it a breakup when it is a breakup. Maybe a breakup sounds more permanent. Yeah, I guess that might be true for some people. I, I mean, at this point, it's just semantics. Mm-hmm. Like, what does it, yeah. sound, what does it mean to you? What does it sound like to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so um, either way, I don't think Ross cheated. I don't think he cheated either. So I guess we agree <laughs> on that. Rachel would not be happy with us. Yeah, she would not. Let us know what y'all think of that. I know I you know. have watched Friends. I know. But that's not to say that what Ross did was wrong. I feel like if I was Rachel in this situation, obviously I would be hurt, obviously. Like, probably they were in the heat of the moment. She said that she wanted a break when she didn't really want a break, which is actually what happened. And he was all up in his feelings because she said she wanted a break which he thought was like oh we're breaking up now I guess and so then that's why he was like whatever and so with that girl so yeah miscommunication yeah. I mean think about those th- that was a pretty poor coping skills yeah okay yeah well let us know whether you thought Ross and Rachel were on a break yeah and whether he treated or not 
and about all these scenarios like these i think we gave yeah. we talked about a lot of different ones which i, I know think, i think painted a pretty clear picture of relationships are very complicated mm-hmm. not one relationship is the same because not one person is the same <laughs> yeah and I agree. they can be really hard and they can take a lot of work which we've talked about in the past um mm. so yeah let us know what y'all thought what y'all thought about these i think these were very interesting yeah, ones. yeah. that's it that's it for today y'all thank you for tuning in we hope you enjoyed it let us know if you've seen those shows i'm gonna watch one day and we'll talk about it some yeah. more we should talk about it let me know what yeah. you think yeah i'd be down for that okay. okay thank you for tuning in we'll catch you at the next one bye bye